Now it's time to take a much closer look at the way we use brushes and at brush properties, the advanced tool properties for brushes, and also a bit about brush styles and brush presets. So we're going to be using the brush a lot in Toon Boom Storyboard Pro, so let's get started and uh, take a look at how it works. All right, I'm going to select the brush tool, that's the main thing. I'm going to select a layer to draw on. In this case, uh, it's all about vector layers in this case. And then I'm going to pick one of these that are labeled presets. Uh, these are really brush styles. They uh, give you a starting point so that if you want a fine or a medium or a heavy brush, do a little sketching. And then anytime you want to, you can hit these sliders and this is your first line of customization or these sliders on the main tool properties page so that you can get way 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 small really small and you can get super thick if you need to so these are really brush styles we'll talk about what brush presets are later on the thing about these brush styles too is that they they're great because they can't really be permanently changed. So when I choose brush 3, I know I'm always going to get this width of a brush. Even if I come in and shrink it, later on I may want to, to get to that thicker brush again. Well, all I have to do is click on it with my brush, and once again it refreshes it back to the way that it was originally. So in that sense, they don't disappear and you can't accidentally delete them either. So that's there. And there's really no way to delete that brush without purposely coming over here and clicking on Delete Brush. Or if you have this selected and you needed to delete it, you could come in here and delete the brush too. So those are, are the brush styles, and this is how you choose your properties for your brush. But there is more. There's a deeper layer of customization that you can go through. Uh, starting with the bottom of this uh, box of tool properties, this little button is called Draw Behind, and right now it is not enabled. If I click on it, then you can see that it has a box around it. Now it is enabled. So if it's enabled, it acts uh, very differently, and I'll just show you how it is. So I've, I've taken it off. It's a normal brush with this has not been enabled and I will pick a color that will help illustrate this so I'm going to draw a nice red circle okay now if I want to draw a black line running behind that circle normally pick the wrong color normally if I put a black line through that circle it stays on top almost always we're used to drawing something where the newest strokes go on top but there is a way using this button which is called the draw behind button which once I click that anything that uh, any brush stroke that I put on top of that is actually going to appear underneath so there it goes it kind of pops in there after you've drawn it and uh, and that's really really helpful for a number of things one of the things that I use the draw behind method for is to help a character pop out from a background. So let me get rid of that. Uh, I'll just give an example. If I were drawing a background with a brush, maybe uh, I'll make it a gray brush so it's easy for us to see it. And it's some pine tree forest with uh, a hill back here. And so that background is on a separate layer and my character is on a layer above it. But this is just one example of how you could use Draw Behind, which is I like to put a white uh, paint, but behind this character's black lines, but still in front of the uh, background layer. So the way I'll do that is choose a nice thick brush, choose a white color, and choose this, Draw Behind. And now as I paint this white stroke, over my character, I'm going to make sure that he isn't getting all conflicted with the background. So you'll see it as soon as I finish the stroke. It's like, wow, my character pops out of that background really nicely. Now, 
some people might just go ahead and erase the background but the big advantage of using the draw behind method is that that background is now still intact and if I need to resize the character, if I need to move the character, if I need to use it in a different scene, I can move all of this together. Now this other option here called Auto Flatten is going to keep you from having uh, too many strokes when a scene gets really, really busy. So most of the time when you're drawing, uh, your strokes are all basically separate vector objects. And when we get into selection and other portions of the tutorials, you'll learn more about this. But each one of these is a separate object. And for one reason or another, you may want to clump them all together so that they move as one object instead of a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, one reason for that is that it takes up less computing space and it'll help your, um, your storyboard just read faster as you're paging through it. It'll help all the uh, the program keep running quickly, especially it's most important in the in the case of people that draw like this with you know a bunch of little lines where you can get hundreds and thousands of little lines just because someone is rendering you know an arm. And if someone has a sketchy style like that, well that could really slow things down. So that's an, a reason that you may want to use auto flatten. So let me get rid of all these lines because these have all been drawn the standard way. And I will pick up my brush and I will enable auto flatten. What this does is as my lines cross over each other, it automatically clumps them together into basically what one object that the computer sees. So now instead of the program trying to keep track of a hundred different strokes, it sees this basically as one object, which helps your uh, your storyboard file move along quickly, helps everything save quickly, helps your performance in the program all around. 